hey, let's go. <laughs> We're going to have fun. <laughs> WTF Bra Remixes. Thank you very much. This is a fraud. This is an embarrassment. This is a major good job. This is a major job. This is a fraud. This is an embarrassment. Here, the, the, the people rule. We were winning everything, and all of a sudden, it was just all off. We, we, we have so many. We had such a big night. And then you take a look at the kind of margins that we won them by. You just take a look at all of these states that we've won tonight. We, the people, will not be silenced. We, the people, will not be bullied. We, the people, will not surrender. We'll come together. We have to stop treating our opponents as enemies. They can't catch us. <coughs> they can't catch us. And now, now, must be counted. They can't catch us. They can't catch us. When the count is finished, we will be the winners. We'll listen to more of this song at the end of the video today, which is 11-9. This is show 12, Detroit, Michigan, FEMA Region 5, BJ Hammerstein here. Welcome to uh, Monday morning show, and we're kind of going to take a look at the alternative news outlets and how they're handling um, the post-election wrap-up. First, though, this is a uh, physician, husband, father of four boys, Dr. Sam Fawaz, F-A-W-A-Z. He's out of Michigan, and protesters were in, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Listen. So there is unity. <laughs> yeah, they're unified in hating both sides, which ultimately kind of is sort of where I started from back in 2013, 2014 with the Jam Scams drug judges. That's uh, local judges who own alcohol and drug testing centers that they secretly own. Then there's actually a network of other businesses that are connected through this process. Many years ago, I learned uh, that both left and right were really fighting or working together against the people. And uh, that's sort of been my position for many years following. And then in 2020, with the lockdown, I was supporting Trump because he was against the globalist moves. He reversed the TPP. He uh, went against human traffickers. He took us out of the... the climate Paris Accords right when he first started. So through um, 2016 to 2020, I started to pay you know really close attention to the policies that he was making and I did follow um, the Q movement. So I this all kind of came together, but I always wasn't a supporter of Democrats or Republicans, not always, just the last five or six years. The rest of my life, I was always a Democrat supporter. This comes from Bill Still's channel. Uh, the Money Masters. He taught me so much about the Federal Reserve. There's links in the show notes. You'll see Bill in a minute. But let's listen to Maria interviewing Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell, the attorney who uh, is uh, defending General Flynn. And she's going to be front and center here. And she might take over the FBI one day, I hear. Let's listen. There has been a massive and coordinated effort to steal this election from we, the people of the United States of America, to delegitimize and destroy votes for Donald Trump, to manufacture votes for Joe Biden. They have done it in every way imaginable, from having dead people vote in massive numbers to absolutely fraudulently creating ballots that exist only voting for Biden. We've identified at least 450,000 ballots ballots in the key states that miraculously only have a mark for Joe Biden on them and no other candidate. If you look at Florida, where things were done right, you can see that that's how the rest of the country should have gone. 
but they also used an algorithm to calculate the votes they would need to flip, and they used the computers to flip those votes from Trump to Biden and from other Republican candidates to their competitors also. I think Doug Collins had the race stolen from him. I think uh, John James had his race stolen. John James. Michigan, unbelievable that we're at this point on this Monday that the corruption has gone this far, but it appears that it's going to come to an end, or at least I hope. From him, it wasn't just President Trump. There were many people affected by this. We have got to fight tooth and nail in federal court to expose this abject fraud and the conspiracy behind it and get a recount and audits in every place it's needed, which is, frankly, most of the country. Maria then read There's off a list of suspected fraudulent ballots provided by Sydney. You have a list of numbers of ballots with only Joe Biden on the ticket. You say it's 98,000 ballots in Pennsylvania, 80 to 90,000 in Georgia, another 42,000 in Arizona, 69 to 115,000 in Michigan, and 62,000. Check the show notes, you know, for the bill still link. This is James O'Keefe from Project Veritas, a very incredible independent journalist. This is a connection to Michigan. My next show, I'm going to do a little bit more on all the sort of different Michigan connected frauds. This is pretty much the only one I'm really touching on uh, in this show. We're just kind of looking at the national, the national narrative on the election right now and the alternative version of that. Plus where you work. I work in the Traverse City Post Office, more specifically the Harlow Branch. Your boss told you and your colleagues something that shocked you this morning. What was it? We were issued a directive this morning to collect any ballots we find in mailboxes, collection boxes, just outgoing mail in general. Separate them at the end of the day so that they could uh, hand stamp them with the previous day's date. Today is November 4th, for clarification. Who is your boss? What is his title? Jonathan would be a direct supervisor, yes. Uh, as of right now, he is the opening supervisor for the Barlow Branch post office. So I, and this is anecdotal, uh, carry down in another office that we watch the postmaster doing it. Um, if it were just a typical day, it would be clerks doing it up at the distribution center. So 8 p.m. election day, November 3rd, uh, the Court of Appeals uh, ruled ballots have to be received by that time. And, and what were you told? To suffer them today so they could mark them with yesterday's date and send them through the express system to wherever they needed to go. This appears to be an attempt to circumvent Michigan law and allow late votes. And uh, you said there was a hamper where letter carriers were supposed to leave their ballots. Where are the ballots now? They were putting them into express bags to go to the distribution center. In regards to a uh, hamper, there was a standard hamper that all letter mail was supposed to go to, and they had a tub next to it that we were supposed to put any ballots collected today into. Yes. What made you come forward? Uh, that's sketchy. <laughs> I don't like sketchy, it screams corruption, uh, also knowing the post office's leanings politically, it, it didn't seem quite right. What is your message to other postal workers who see things like this? Report it. Report it. How are we supposed to have any integrity in this country if we are just going to let things slide? There's not going to be any integrity left. Are you afraid of retaliation against you? Uh, I've had whistleblower policies backfire on me in the past, so yes. We'll have to reach out to Jonathan Clark for comment. Uh, hey, is this Jonathan? Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm a reporter with Project Veritas, and James O'Keefe here, and I have a, I have information that you guys have been stamping ballots with the previous date, November third. He just hung up. He just hung up. He just hung up the phone. Project Veritas, the drama-free election in Michigan. <laughs> Let's take a look at this Gateway Pundit story that's been updated since I last first saw it. Update. Self-described Dem Party worker, Michigan resident who bragged on Facebook, I work for Wayne County, Michigan, and I threw out every Trump ballot I saw. Tens of thousands of them, and so did all of my coworkers. He says it was a joke. Keo Foxton, Keo Foxton, Keo Foxton, who lists Detroit, Michigan as his residence on Facebook, also lists the Democratic Party as his employer on at least one of his Facebook pages. do 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 do, do. Two days ago, Foxen made fun of people who expressed concern over an alarming post he made on one of his Facebook pages. Time to come clean. I work for Wayne County, Michigan, and I threw out every Trump ballot I saw. Tens of thousands of them. So did my co-workers. I regret no... I don't know. 
What are your regrets? Facebook uses screenshot screenshotted his messages and wrote, "This fool needs to be arrested." And fair election work from a self-proclaimed Marxist. Foxton did not refute his statement, but instead asked, why do they always say self-proclaimed Marxist? You can't just say Marxist. Keel Foxton, why do they always say self-proclaimed Marxist? You can't just say Marxist. Time to come clean. I work for Wayne County. Update. Keel Foxton, not his real name, has contacted us via email. Here is his message to us. I am humbly asking you to please update this. It was a joke for my new followers. I never intended to receive to receive anyone. I've never been a ballot counter. Keel added, I made a big mistake and I wish I could undo it. Thank you. After Foxton's message started to circulate on Facebook, two of his three accounts went missing. The original message we got on Facebook when we clicked on his account said that the content isn't available, but now two of his accounts, including the one where he bragged about stealing Trump ballots, have disappeared. The account that lists Foxton as a Cuban resident is still active. I mean, perhaps someone should explain to the 32-year-old musician Keel that making claims about committing mass voter fraud or suggesting that he interfered in our election is a serious crime and is certainly no laughing matter. It's interesting. It's been interesting these last few days. I'm uh, exploring more and more different networks as far as where I'm getting my news from. Uh, Newsmax, the Next News Network, OAN. Uh, I never really watched Fox. I don't. I don't have. Well, I do watch CNN and Fox News. I guess via YouTube, but I don't have subscriptions to like regular cable like that. So I have been mostly focusing on the local and network uh, broadcast television news. But they really, the way that they're pushing the one side, it, it was really tough to watch this week for a little bit of time. So you should like. Uh, well, please like, share, subscribe to my videos, now that I think about it. But uh, the Next News Network's doing a pretty good job if you're looking for some conservative takes. Subscribed, I've done. Let's take a quick look and listen. The top Democrat caught in the act. The video you're about to see is all the proof that you need. Before I get into this report, I invite you to hit the red subscribe button down below, then hit that notification bell so you're the first to know when the latest news breaks. Jim Hoffer, the Gateway Pundit, reports that back in September, Michelle Hangley, the city attorney for Philadelphia, tweeted out that Democrats need a landslide to win in 2020. Yes, that's what she tweeted out. And on Thursday, the same Philadelphia attorney blocked Pam Bondi and GOP attorneys from entering the voter counting center in Philadelphia. Watch. It's 1130 and it's already 1130, so I don't, I don't understand what needs to be evaluated. Okay, so, so we'll respond to you in writing or come down and talk to you? No, I'm right here. You don't need to respond in writing. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll tell you. I'll come with you. Why don't we all talk about it? What, what do you need to evaluate? Talk. They're talking. Yeah, there's, there's nothing more They're to say at the moment. Now, my name is Pam Bondi. I'm one of the president's lawyers. Yes, and yes, um, I know who you are. Thank you for helping us or, or, or evaluating this. I mean, the order's pretty clear. I've been a lawyer for 30 years. What, what's, what, can you tell us what's unclear about it? You're a I private have, lawyer and I'm acting in the government. I'm a lawyer who represents the city. Great. The city is evaluating it. And I can't tell you anything more than They're evaluating a judge's order? What the order means. And when they're ready to talk to you about it, they will. But I can assure you that they're not violating the order. The order is currently in effect. Michelle. What a joke. They're not violating the order. Have any this is total blocking. You, you have to have the, you have to follow the federal election rules. All the bunch, bunch of states. I did it. it all by myself. Okay. It says we that are, no later than 10:30 today, you're to follow the election code, and we, my people, my clients, representatives, are to be within six feet of the process. We have read the order, and we are complying with the order, and we will discuss it with you in a bit. That's why we have to go to court. Six feet. We have to recount the, the discrepancy. Unbelievable. According to some estimates, President Trump won Pennsylvania in a landslide. Democrats had to come up from a 700,000 vote deficit in the state to take the lead. It took them three days of... <laughs> it took them three days of creating ballots, it seems like, if you could believe that. <laughs> Unreal. Let's listen to Linda McAllister, Deplorable McAllister TV, for just a moment here. This is uh, from Sunday, November 8th. You should like, 
You should subscribe to Truman the dog. I have more information on her there. in the show notes. So uh, I want to give her, share the good news. This is a good news video. I'm not going to make any, oh, woe is me videos. You know why? Because it's happening. This is the plan. This is the plan. This is the, the plan. The plan is to allow them to cheat like the whores they are. Whoa. <laughs> gonna over cheat, right? That's exactly what they did. And in this act of standing back and letting them do their thing, what they are doing right now is creating an avalanche of evidence that's going to be used in court. What we have right now are court cases that are building. These are legitimate court cases for voter fraud and high treason, and they're sprouting up all over the place in every state. In Michigan. And, and, and eventually it'll be federal. It'll be a federal case. But I believe these state uh, trials are going to disclose a lot. I think this thing is going to move fast. It's a D5 avalanche. And remember, nothing can stop it. That's why our president is playing golf. He's done his part. Now he's just going to go play golf. That's his signal to us that he's playing golf. Of course, I can't play golf <laughs> because I have to rebuild my uh, channel so that when the real skinny starts coming right. out. So they censor channels like her. I've been carrying lists of different channels that have been censored, subscribed. I had a conversation with an old friend on Sunday how we have to protect my platform and do different things right now because I'm certainly going to get knocked out <laughs> if I keep uh, posting and talking the way that I am. My channel's really small right now, so it's sort of underneath everything. But yeah, like, uh, I mean, <laughs> they're not going to keep me around like this. But here, here's the thing. There is something happening. The mainstream media is doing everything in its power. It's working hand in, not all of them, but many working hand in hand with uh, the Democratic Party, the Democratic National Committee, lots of Republicans. This is why I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. These people are criminals. They're crooks. I've been saying this to my friends and family and small circle for quite a while now. And I learned this and I saw this firsthand and it was from a local perspective and I learned about the New World Order and the United Nations and the World Health Organization and the CDC from these documents that I read back in 2014, 2015. The media, which I used to work for, I was a Detroit Free Press reporter, arts and entertainment, and I was ultimately, they weren't looking at the information that I wanted to present to them about the judges. They had one little piece of the story. They did not want to expose the network. They did not want to show the larger thing. So I understand how the media works and what they're doing right now is they're trying to get Donald Trump to concede, have too much pressure on him and his family so that they concede and don't take this court or this battle to court because they do not want this information to come out into the public. And what information is that? One more time. Let's go to Russia TV as they seem to understand Christianity and journalism much more than America these days. Whether it's in North Carolina, whether it's in Michigan, whether it's in other states where they're sending out, they're going to be sending out, they're going to be sending out 80 million ballots. They're, and it's Democrats. They're going to, they're trying to rig this election. That was the president back in September at a Nevada rally saying something he repeatedly said in the lead up to this week's presidential election. And I believe he was right on target. I also think we're trying to do everything we can ahead of time to make it clear that just because Donald Trump says something on election night or suggests he might be winning, uh, that is not going to be based in fact. There is no way he will be outright winning on election night. That was. Remember, the media literally pulled the plug as the president was speaking around 2 a.m. that night. Joe Biden's campaign manager, Jen O'Malley Dillon, speaking on Monday, the day before the election, and her words seem most prophetic. How could she be so sure that under no circumstances, Donald Trump would be declared the winner on election night? Don't expect our news media to investigate that one. In many cases, it seemed like they were working in concert with the Biden campaign on this. Which I want to bring up right now, 
working in concert with the Biden campaign, I got to tell you, I'm very concerned about our COVID scandemic, pandemic. I'm starting to think that the TCF Center, which I visited when it was turned into a thousand bedroom hospital, after the hospital was shut down, they turned it into a ballot making process, making fake ballot station. I, I don't really know. But this is uh, what's going on in Detroit, Michigan, the United States, these elections. We need an audit. It needs to be fixed. You can't just um, listen to the media and say Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the next ones and pretend that all this is, you know, just forget the last four years that didn't happen. There's 70 plus million people that voted for the president. Um, that's a lot more than probably Joe Biden got. We can assure you we're going to be doing coverage on Peacock, and we can assure you if Donald Trump goes out and declares victory, we will be there to say, don't take the feed. That was also on the day before the election. Joe Scarborough talking about censoring the president. Don Lemon did the same on CNN after they ran a delayed video of Trump's visit to GOP headquarters in Virginia on election day. I almost feel like I'm not sure... It, if we should be running this propaganda video as people are still going yeah. to the polls to vote today because n not well, much I of what he said. I was interviewed by Don Lemon on a show uh, following the Charlie Sheen comedy tour back in Detroit. Uh, you know, I liked seeing it. I actually thought I was going to maybe work for them one day. And I was also on headline news that time too. Douchebags. <laughs> Hey, Don, anything was I, true. And after the president reacted to the election results at around 2.30 on Wednesday morning at the White House by claiming that he had in fact won and the vote counting should have been completed by that time, this was the typical media reaction. We all were hoping that the president would not go there and lie and falsely and prematurely declare victory. Um, yeah. So again, as always, it's not a surprise, but it is shocking. Absolutely. And, and Jake, I think our founding fathers are probably rolling in their graves yes, right now. That's what's happening. Uh, they did They're rolling in their graves in the United States frauds, delegitimizing an American election. I will agree that our founders are rolling <laughs> over in their graves, but it's because even from the grave, they can see that the election fix is in and the media is a huge part of that conspiracy. Want more evidence? Did you know that on Wednesday? It's, it's, it's disheartening. I love the media. Um, that's why I'm still doing it. I love doing this type of work. Uh, the media organizations. <sighs> Unbelievable. <laughs> the Biden campaign's top attorney said this. As far as our own planning, we're winning the election. We've won the election. Of course, you didn't hear anything about that false claim because it was made by the Biden side. Be warned, the election fix is in has been for years and will be in as court cases get underway. It's merely another chapter in the four-year effort to remove Donald Trump from... There you have it. <laughs> You're going to hear false claims and basis, basis claims all day long. Really, they should just be named claims. When they use those adjectives, they're just putting their opinion in your head. Mayor Mike Dugan... This is from Facebook. I'm proud that Detroit was a huge part of electing Joe Biden president. Friday, the court dismissed Trump's claims of vote problems in Detroit for a complete lack of evidence. That's frightening, Mayor Dugan. What's interesting is that Trump saw equal or greater vote losses from 2016 in Oakland County and the Wayne County suburbs. Can't imagine why he's not also fabricating fraud claims against Farmington or Bloomfield or Gross Point. Mayor Dugan, be careful. Jim Harper... This is from his Facebook. If you thought she was sadistic warden before, he's talking about Governor Gretchen Whitmer, co-chair of the Joe Biden campaign for president campaign, she's only warming up. Here comes the dark winner, your candidate promised. Happy holidays. This is from MichiganCapitalConfidential.com. Two more people meet outside homes not wearing masks, subject to the $1,000 fine. I haven't looked at the latest Michigan stuff. My next show is probably going to be the Michigan fraud uh, and the latest Michigan stuff. I'm going to probably focus on the Great Lakes State again. Like I'm doing right now, Susan J. Dimas, editor-in-chief and columnist at Michigan Advance, views are my own. Former Inside Michigan pol politics publisher, mom, partner, hiker, wanderer, feminist. Hey, maybe that policy of letting anybody say anything and printing it isn't a great one when our electoral system is being undermined by bad actors. 
I'm quite certain that the Q not to accuse me of being part of a weird conspiracy that will end in Trump murdering people on live TV will be able to separate facts from BS. I hope when this is all over, we all use our own discernment, look at different sources from all around, put the pieces together ourselves, and try not to let any one person or mob, you know, rule over us. It's really what we are. Whatever happened to our independence and. Really, if we want to be the, the leaders of the world, our leaders need to go. <laughs> Laura Cox, scoffing at Michigan GOP attempts to ensure ballot integrity. A.G. Nessel is showing the bias, bias that is present for GOP in Michigan. This is the same bias that our challengers faced at TCF. There needs to be impartial examination of what happened this election by more than Biden-endorsed officials. Dana Nessel, if you have an actual evidence of voter fraud, you should contact law enforcement, as it's a crime which is taken very seriously. If you have ridiculous conspiracy theories unsupported by facts or reality, by all means, contact the Michigan GOP. She's too in it to understand that she's supposed to be neutral in her job as AG. She is supposed to be neutral. And uh, Michigan Department of State, false claims from Ron McDaniel have no merit Michigan then my Twitter friend, Fit Patriot USA, says, LMAO, right. Unreal, she has the audacity to write this response. Enjoy handcuffs. Cheating is a choice, not mistake. A couple more tweets I missed from AC at WITYN Fun. The election hasn't been officially called or certified. Out of all the disturbing tweets on Twitter, this one has disturbed me the most. She's talking about Benjamin Netanyahu, Bibi, the Prime Minister of Israel. Congratulations at Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Joe, we've had a long, warm personal relationship for nearly 40 years, and I know you as a great friend of Israel. I look forward to working with both of you to further strengthen the special alliance between the U.S. and Israel. Joe was with Barack Obama, and they did not have a great relationship with Israel. And Israel and Trump... This is disturbing. Uh, AC responds, when I think of how long and hard our president has fought to keep his campaign promises and fight for religious liberties in Israel, this was like a slap in the face of Trump and his supporters who love, pray, and support and fight for Israel. I don't know if I love, pray, and support and fight for Israel, but I am a Jew, and this is crazy. <laughs> but nothing really surprises me at this point, and I think that they're all kind of criminal to begin with. Paul Ferber, incorrect. What the media says has nothing to do with the election process at all. He's responding to Yahoo News. President Donald Trump never admits defeat, but he faces a stark choice now that Democrat Joe Biden has won the White House. Concede graciously for the sake of the nation or don't and get evicted anyway. So that's a message that they're pushing at you right now. I've been supporting Trump because he's putting American, American people first. He's crushing the globalist uh, socialism, communism effort that's been going on here for decades. I'm sorry that you are unfamiliar with all of that. I've been trying to talk about it and expose it since 2014, and I'm going to continue to do it one way or the other moving forward. The candidate of 47 years... No. There is one less candidate in the race for the presidency tonight. Delaware Listen. Senator Joseph Biden dropped out of the hunt today, saying the disclosures about his plagiarism in law school and his exaggerations about his academic record made it impossible for him to continue. I do it with incredible reluctance, and it makes me angry. Mm -hmm. I'm angry with myself. That's right, you should for be. having been put in the position, put myself in the position of having to make a choice. Just a few more tweets before I let you go today from three days, three nights. Be proud. You are temporarily suffering for the entire world. Why? The goal of this election is to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that every nation rigged every election every single time. This must be proven before the world can change. You will love how this ends. I hope that's the way it ends. Joe M. And a storm is upon us. How do you show the left that Biden is in the pocket of China. Easy. Reveal how China printed and delivered millions of fraudulent ballots to push Biden over the edge and release the evidence of his payments from China at the same time. The public will understand why China was so invested in Biden. 
Hunter's laptop. One more from Joan. If there are any celebrating liberals who might see this, please take heed. Your candidate is not who you think he is. You are celebrating the occupation of America by foreign hostile forces who are laughing at you. They are laughing because you let them trick you into electing the very fascism you fear most. Thank God, however, this will not happen. Even though you fell for a great deception, your mistake has been mitigated by true defenders of freedom. Sadly, since you have not been able to see it for yourself, this reality will be thrust upon you in the coming weeks. Your candidate did not win. He will never be president. Worse than this, you will still be shown the reality of your mistake and it will be upon you to process what is about to occur. Trump won by a landslide. He will stay in the White House and everything you thought you knew will be proven a lie. You are simply a lost sheep and we are waiting with open arms until you return to the paddock. I just want to say that I'm here because I do believe that lots of revelations are about to come out and you're going to, and when I say you, I, I learned this six years ago ultimately, but a lot of the people that we look up to that have been put on pedestals that we follow and look to as our, our idols and leaders and our heroes, a lot of them are just the opposite. Thanks everyone for uh, joining me today. Please like, share, subscribe. I don't know how this is going to end. I know that it's going to probably go into court and it's going to take a long time. I think that you're going to see that, see, uh, you know, the media start to walk back a little bit of the president elect talk because they're going to get themselves in trouble. I hope that we could come together as a group, as a nation. There's going to be pain coming. Oh, wait. We, the people, will not be silenced. We, the people, will not be bullied. We, the people, will not surrender. Remember, we have to stop treating our opponents as enemies. Follow WTF Brock, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden election night remix. They can't catch us. Thanks for tuning in this. today. When the count is finished, we will be the winners. And uh, I'll see you either tomorrow night, Tuesday night, or this Wednesday. Is a major Thanks this so is much, a major everyone. This is a fraud. This is an embarrassment. Here, the, the, the people rule. Every vote must be counted. I'm not here to declare that we won. We were getting ready to win this election. Every vote must be counted. We will be the winners. We were getting ready for a big celebration. It will be time for us to do what we've always done, done. Put the campaign behind it. Lower the temperature. Lower the temperature. It's not like, oh, oh, oh. What happened? And then they said, oh, oh, oh. They can't catch us. They can't catch us. And now, now, every vote must be counted. They can't catch us. They can't catch us. When the count is finished, we will be the winners. This is a fraud. This is an embarrassment. No one's going to take our democracy away from us. This is a fraud. This is an embarrassment. Not now, not, not ever. <laughs> there you have it, you guys. Have a great one today. See you later. Thank you, WTF Bronica. Great remix right there. <laughs>